Welcome back. In this episode of Oxygen Not Included, we're going to be taking another look at the natural gas geyser power plant. Except for this time, rather than having byproducts of polluted water and electricity, we're going to have fertilizer and electricity to see how that changes the balance of things. I'm also going to answer a couple of the questions that were brought up from the last video, because there were many. All right, so regarding the wasted energy sort of debate, there was a lot of different comments about this. A whole lot of them. So after reading lots and lots of your comments, I was able to narrow down to exactly what the problem is. So the problem is actually right there in the reports, right? Your colony created, in this case, 336.6 kilojoules of power today that was not used or stored in a battery. So that's exactly what waste it is. So it's power that is overflowed and then just been deleted, essentially. That's exactly what it is. It doesn't turn to heat or anything like that. You kind of got to throw real life logic out the window. This is a video game. So that energy is just disappearing. It's wasted. So in this situation, wasted is being counted when all of your available battery storage is full. And in this case, all of our batteries are full. So in this situation, everything that's coming off of this natural gas generator has nowhere to go. So every kilojoule that's being created here is going to be counted as wasted. But watch what happens when I disable this building. Wasted continues to go up and up and up and up continuously. Now, there was a couple of comments that were talking about, well, maybe batteries are actually draining uh, electricity over time. And you can actually set a battery off to its side all by itself, and it won't drain battery, it won't drain power at all. So nothing here is being drained. No power inside the system is being used anywhere. And that's key. No power inside the system is being used anywhere. Watch what happens when I add this tiny, tiny battery to the system. You see that? S 617 joules jumped into that battery. And notice that the report here has stopped. Okay, so let me show you that again. If I enable this building, you'll see the report here is building. So. We're creating power, right? So this is what we're adding, and this is what's being wasted because it has nowhere to go. I disabled this. Wasted continues to go up. So power here is continuing to go up. I add a battery to the end of this, and boom. There's no more power being wasted. And a few joules has jumped into that tiny battery. So that's what the bug is. So the bug is that a little extra power when you turn off this natural gas generator right here is hunting around trying to find a place to go, but it has nowhere to go. So therefore it's continuously being counted as wasted. So over and over and over again, that same little few joules of electricity is being counted as wasted. So therefore we are not creating more and more energy. It's just a simple bug in how that thing is being reported. So there we have it, the wasted discrepancy has been solved. So we can put that aside, we don't have to have a million natural gas generators over there to uh, make a bunch of infinite energy, right? So that is not the case. It's just a, a little bug in how that's being reported. So with that in mind, I can go ahead and get rid of all but two natural gas generators. Or can I? Because many of you guys mentioned that a fertilizer generator gives off natural gas. So if we take a look at the fertilizer maker, Look at this, it takes 150 grams a second of polluted water and it gives off 20 grams a second of natural gas, which is one third of what you need to run a natural gas generator. It also gives off 120 grams a second of fertilizer. So that's gonna be really interesting because we have over 300 kilograms of polluted water that we're generating each day. But now we're going to turn that into fertilizer and natural gas which that natural gas will then be turned back into polluted water, which we will then turn back into more fertilizer and natural gas and create this really interesting snowball effect. Now, I don't think it will become a perpetual motion machine. However, it will be interesting to see just how much we can get out of this. And on another note, I did put in some gas valves to kind of truncate things down to the natural gas generators, but that really didn't do anything. It's also worth mentioning that I've been running this system here for over 100 cycles now and nothing's overheated or destroyed itself. So it's very stable as far as the temperatures and the temperatures are very high. So let's go ahead and rework this a little bit and get the fertilizer maker up and running. All right, so there were several comments about using the gas pipes and the liquid pipes 
to kind of heat things up and cool things down. So the temperature that's coming out of this area over here, the natural gas, that's I think being warmed up a little bit more by this gas pump, but it has stabilized. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna take the outlet of this gas pump, which is gonna be at about 100 degrees Celsius of that natural gas. I'm going to use that using an insulated pipe, or as long as it's a bisolite, doesn't necessarily have to be the insulate, it just has to be a bisolite. I'm gonna navigate this thing down here, just like so. And then I'm gonna use some granite pipe over here to distribute that heat, so 100 degrees Celsius, into the liquid down here. So, something like that. The idea is that we might be able to get the temperature up much higher without having to use, like, a tepidizer. We'll see if that works. That'll be an interesting result. And because I'm interested to see if this will work, I'm gonna put a atmospheric switch down here. And I'm gonna set that for above two kilograms. I wanna see if it'll turn on once the liquid gets there. Okay, so currently the temperature of this water is 44 degrees Celsius. So it's not really going up that high. Ah, bummer. Atmospheric switch reads nothing once you get enough liquid in there. All right, so how do I cycle this pump on and off in such a way that it works with the amount of liquid that's down there. Because I don't want the pump to run constantly. If I can avoid that, that'd be awesome. All right, so here's kind of my crazy idea to try to run this pump based on a, a, a level. So I've trapped some gas over here and I want the water to go up into this area to kind of compress some of that gas. And that would increase the pressure. And then as the liquid pumps down, it should, lower down inside of this funnel or whatever it is and the pressure should drop so that would turn the pump off that's the thought we'll see if it works so right now that's set at 206 so let's say I set that at you know 280 to see if once I get some more liquid down here and I take up maybe one or more of these tiles if that's gonna increase the pressure enough to turn the switch on and then when I pump it away It'll turn off. Okay, so I only want this to turn on if it's above that pressure. Okay, so there it turned on because the pressure went up. It's actually just kind of filling a pipe right now and going back on itself. And then it turned off. And you can see the water is going up and down out of this tile. And that's causing the pump to turn on and off. Hopefully this thing will turn off pretty soon. It might need a little bit more space. You know what? I think it's working. How sweet is that? Awesome. All right, so look at this thing go. Watch, watch, watch. This is fancy. Whoop. And then it runs out and turns right back off. I love it. Okay, so one thing I want to do here before I calculate just how many fertilizer makers I can put on this is I want to retest this, but with just two natural gas generators right here. I think when I did my first test, I had a little extra natural gas in this chamber. So the first day was a little bit higher. So, starting at 154 here, I'm just gonna be testing these two guys. Same setup as before. Okay, so my experiment results are in 782 kilojoules a day is the average. And that's right in there with all of the other generators. So three, four, and two, all about the same. Mostly because it's consuming the same source of natural gas. So it can just only make so much energy out of that gas. So that makes sense. And I think this also exposes something on day 47 where I must have had a little extra gas in there. So I think this is a little bit of a null result. The key thing we want to observe though is the total polluted water we're generating over here. Okay, so based on my calculations here, I would need four fertilizer makers in order to run all of the polluted water I have. In a day, that would give me 44.7 kilograms of a natural gas and give me the net result of 267.9 kilograms of fertilizer based on my calculations that is you know it'll be more and less depending on the day in grams a second terms that's 74.4 and 446.5 but here's where things get interesting because 74.4 grams a second is enough to run yet another natural gas generator which in turn will give me more uh, polluted water and while calculating all of that would be a lot of fun not really <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and build it and leave it up to a little bit of mystery here just to see how many natural gas generators I can run off of this 
There we go. I'm calling it. I've made six. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to say you vacuumed this out so that all you have is natural gas. So let me just go ahead and solve that problem right there. Boom. Nice and easy. Now let's plug a bunch of these in. I might be getting to the range where I can actually start to overdraw this. But we'll see. We'll see if this thing protects me or not. I'm going to leave two of these disabled to start with. All right, so here we go. Filling up these fertilizer makers. All that nice liquid there. Look at all that fertilizer. It's just kicking out. And I should be getting a little bit of natural gas in here. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and dis deconstruct the barrier between these two areas here. So I got a lot of natural gas in here. We'll see. See if this thing jams up, if there's too much pressure or not. You can see this system is drawing, I've seen up to 800, ooh, 900 watts. Quite a bit, actually. All together. Okay, so one thing you can see here is that both of these natural gas generators can no longer keep up with the amount of natural gas I'm outputting. So this pipe is slowly backing up. So I need to enable this guy at this point in order to eat up that enough of that gas. <laughs> Man, look at it go. <laughs> Okay, so now my next problem here is that the liquid pipe is blocked. I can't pump any more in. I'm not consuming enough polluted water. Guess I gotta enable this guy, which I think I need I need more power. I'm gonna start blowing up my circuits here. Let's see what happens. Yep, things are starting to overload. Oh, and look what is overloading. It's the wire bridge. Okay, so there was a comment about using wire bridges to take heavy watt wires across walls. As you can see right here, this system is starting to damage it because it's drawing too much current. I don't know, that thing's a little bit funny at the moment, so... I guess it is what it is. There we go. So back to the liquid lock. That's also gonna slow down my little... Atma switch, though. Ah, well, it'll be fine. Alright, so currently, my system right now is keeping five fertilizer makers constantly running. However, three natural gas generators are not keeping up with demand. So I need more generators. It's starting to get a little chaotic here. All right, let's see if I can fit one down here. Aha! All right. So that's the in taken care of and the out. Oh, it's perfect, just like that. And then the power. Oh, it's like it was meant to be there. Sweet. I don't know why this one doesn't have a green bar on it, but it is running constantly. All right, so now, as you can imagine, my fertilizer makers are no longer keeping up. So I need more fertilizer makers. <laughs> this is crazy. I know what you're thinking. At this point, it would be great to do some math, but I like the suspense. Look at this. This air scrubber isn't even keeping up. I'm, I need two air scrubbers now. It's running away from me. All right. <laughs> Look at all these fertilizers. Holy cow. So this air scrubber up here is having a nightmare. It can't take care of it. I gotta help it out. So let me deconstruct that guy and make two of them. All right, so I solved that. Holy moly, this thing is crazy. The problem <laughs> is I can't consume enough natural gas now, so I need another natural gas generator. This is madness. What? Okay, so let's see if I can stack another one of those in here somehow. All right, so that is five natural gas generators. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is nuts. And eight fertilizer makers that I now need more fertilizer makers. So here's a good question. Can you run a natural gas generator off of polluted water? Can you just run it off of that and actually get some extra power out of it all by itself? There's probably a good chance you could. I mean, sure, a liquid pump uses 240 watts and a gas pump uses 240 watts, but they don't need to run constantly because it's not like things consume it really quick. You're just talking about 60 grams a second and this thing can pump at 500. So yeah, this system <laughs> can just continue to grow and grow and grow like constantly. Okay, well, now I need more fertilizer makers. You know the drill. I should have just made a ton of these to begin with. I knew it was going to be ridiculous, but, you know, whatever. This is more entertaining. Well, I no longer have enough power. I'm going to need another power transformer. 
The levels of ridiculous keep stacking on top of this. <laughs> Look at this thing. All right, I think at this point we've reached a very ridiculous level. I think we're officially there. <laughs> I mean, look at this. It's wild. You know what? I think at this point, I have so much natural gas down here that it's having a hard time getting up to the <laughs> gas pump. I'm gonna have to move the gas pump. All right, so there we go. I moved this. Let's see if I can keep up with it. My poor power plant. It's like sprawling all over the place. All right, well, you might have guessed it. At this point, I would need another natural gas generator. There's obviously something pretty awesome going on here that I think we can learn more about, but I'm going to have to put it into another video. So let's go ahead and just do a benchmark test on this system to see just how much power is being generated here. So on cycle 200, I'm going to begin this test. Okay, so the result for the first day, holy moly. I created 2,370 kilojoules of power. <laughs> of that, I used uh, 1,000 kilojoules. All right, so here are the results for five natural gas generators and 12 fertilizer makers. On average, this entire system over here created 2,373 kilojoules of power a day. And it consumed 1,017 on average, giving us a net of 1,355.9 kilojoules a day. That averages out to 2,259.8 watts. What? <laughs> to put that in perspective, it was 1,195 with just the two natural gas generators. So we've roughly doubled the amount of power output. Oh yeah, and by the way, we created 668.8 kilograms of fertilizer each day. And for kind of an interesting perspective here, I mapped this out according to the fertilizer maker's positions. And you'll notice that the ones that are down here on the bottom right a little bit, those were a little bit lower than some of these others. So I think this whole experiment thus far really blows open the door for optimizing the layout for the liquid systems, for the gas systems, how that's all moving out, how to fill your room with a whole bunch of natural gas generators. And here's a crazy idea. If it's possible, what would it take to make a 10 megawatt power plant? And what in the world would you even power with that? <laughs> I don't know. We definitely cracked open a new one here and I can see a lot more videos on this crazy natural gas geyser system. So there you have it. That was a really interesting video. I like it. And I think we've blown open the door for uh, more natural gas power plant videos. I mean, I can tell it already. You guys are going to have a lot of different recommendations for crazy things I can do. My favorite takeaway of today, though, I like this. This is my favorite little switch right now. I'm loving that. Well, that's all I have time for today. Thank you guys for watching. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Let me know down there in the comment section below if you enjoyed this video. And by the way, thank you guys for all your support recently. It's been absolutely awesome. Things just keep getting bigger and crazier, just uh, just like this power plant. I mean, I can see it now. An entire map full of fertilizer makers and natural gas generators. Madness. I love it. Thanks for watching, guys. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you for, so much for that. Hopefully I'll see you again next time. Stay awesome. Peace. Brotkar out.